past couple of weeks and a little bit since we started, but we're gonna we're gonna dive into some transformers and talk about transformation and why we do that and um, how we do it. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off looking at page number 304 in the book, and we you were tested on this on the past couple, I think the exam and maybe the, a quiz or two about um, voltage relationships, what, how, how we get a secondary voltage um, out of a transformer. And how, guys, if you can remember back, how do we get that? How do we get secondary voltage? What, what in what relationship to the primary windings to the secondary windings? Anybody rem remember that? Okay. Remember, primary voltage travels in one direction, and what does the secondary wind travels up? opposite direction? Opposite directions. That's correct. Um, and that's that's really all transformers how they operate. No matter what the you know the secondary voltage is, that's how they all operate. But what I want to do first of all, guys, I want to I'm gonna share my screen here. I'm gonna show you a couple videos on how a single phase transformers made. Oh, cool. Y'all see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Electric transformers. We see them everywhere, but often take for granted the big part they play in our everyday lives. Their job is to transform the high voltage from electrical power lines to the lower <clears throat> voltage that's suitable for home use. Without them, raw electrical power would be virtually useless to the average person. Transformers are a critical part of modern life. But did you ever stop to wonder what's inside those canisters? To build a transformer, workers start by taking paper that's coated with epoxy glue and tape it to a wooden block. Next component, an eighth of an inch thick aluminum strip. It's a metal that can withstand the heat that a high voltage current produces. As the block is rotated, the paper and the aluminum strip are wrapped around it. An aluminum bus bar called the low voltage lead sends low voltage current out from the transformer. Workers fold the lead and move the unit to another rotating block for more wrapping. The insulating paper has epoxy glue on both sides. This glue will later melt and bond several components in place. On the next block, a worker tapes on more epoxy paper along with epoxy coated copper wire. He covers the paper. the same process forming a second layer of copper wire. Solders a high voltage lead wire to the copper wire, then rolls yet another layer of copper wire. insulation by removing of humidity 
He also melts the melts of the aluminum strip and the top of the assembly now goes into a steel tank. A rubber gasket is hammered around the perimeter and a grounding wire is bolted on. Then three thermoplastic bushings are inserted. Workers connect the low voltage lead to the thermoplastic bushings, then bolt the bushings to the tank. They adhere an oil filling guide to the side of the tank, then position an automated filling machine. A machine fills the tank with mineral oil, drawing a vacuum to make sure the oil disperses throughout the coil and core. The oil is used for its thermal and insulating properties. An internal fault detector will alert maintenance crews if there's a short circuit. A worker runs lead wire through the thermoplastic bushing and secures it in place. Next comes the high voltage connector. Finally, the tank cover is bolted shut. The transformation, so to speak, is finished. Before transformers go into service, they have to undergo some truly electrifying tests. This equipment simulates a 145,000 volt lightning strike. Then it's into a water tank to test the transformer for leaks. If it passes muster, it could soon be appearing on a pole near you. Okay, guys. Cool video. Yeah. What do you notice different about these transformers than the ones we have on the field, out on the yard? They're a lot bigger. Mm, yeah, these are a lot bigger, but what physically looking at it, what's the difference? Oh, dear. They only had one bushing. Correct. And that... That does not mean to say that they operate different, you know, operate differently. They still have the same primary windings. They just, it just exits, it exits the transformer tank differently. This is very similar to what we used at Duke. Um, the primary bushing is here. The primary comes in, it goes through the windings and it actually has down here at the bottom, we call it a tank ground, which are on those as well but that was the other end of the wine and we didn't have two bushings on our, what we used in, uh, for residential customers. Um, that's just a different way of construction. Um, I know Santee uses what we have, what we have out on the yard has the two bushing um, on the primary side. Professor Shoemaker? Uh, there's some, well, a double bushing transformer is gonna cost you a little bit more money just because of the single bushing itself. And when you start working for the organization you're going to be working for, you got to get familiar of what you can connect and you can disconnect as far as the transformer is concerned when it's energized and the things to look out for. Uh, they showed it in the video there. You've got to have, and I've told this many times, you got to have a complete path on the primary and secondary side, right? Right. So what are, what are they using for the complete path on primary? They showed it when they they were connecting it inside the transformer. Primary. I got my primary coming in. Where do they take the other lead to? On the primary side. In the video, they showed them actually taking the other side where our other bushing would be on a, uh, on a transformer like we have. They took that lead and they took it to the tank of the transformer. So the tank of the transformer and then the on the inside and then the connection that you have on the outside is the actual primary ground. Now, like I said, your normal work practice is there. Obviously, if you take that ground loose on the tank of the transformer, you've disrupted the path of your primary and that will be, your tank will now be de-energized uh, to whatever the voltage of the primary is. Right. So that's inherently dangerous. Right. Okay, on a two bushing transformer, if you take the tank ground loose or it corrodes, breaks, whatever, that's not the path for primary on a two bushing transformer. You got a bushing that comes in and then a bushing that comes out, that's grounded. Uh, so that's one reason why we used uh, dual bushing transformers. The other one was, it depends on where you want to locate your switch. 
So if you hang a transform on a pole and it's got two bushings, I can hang a switch on the left side of the cross arm or the right side of the cross arm. So it gives a little bit of flexibility of uh, switch location. Right. Good video, I like that. Yep, on, on your secondary sides, guys, too. And I'm gonna show another little video on this in just a minute, but you can see right what we're looking at. You can see the, the letter designations and the, these are your secondary you know, outputs on your transformer. You can see A, B, and on the, um, the far left will be your D, but behind B is C. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. There's a reason why it's designated A, B, and C, D. Um, a, B, C, D on there. So Yeah, I, on your left, it's kind of hard to tell by the video. I'm like that, just so I can yeah. let you know. A is on the left side of this video, the A secondary lead. There are two leads in the center and they're mashed up together. That's B, C. And like Professor B said, the one that he's getting ready to put on now is D. And they have, they're stamped on the leads. Why are the leads so much bigger here than the uh, primary leads? Primary leads are just a thin piece of copper wire. Why are they so big? The higher the voltage, the lower the amps. There you go. There you go. I can use a smaller lead there because I don't have as many amps as I do on the secondary side. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you got any questions about that? That's I, I like that video. Um, real in detail about how to make a transformer. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Like that one. I'm gonna shoot over to this next one here, and it just talks about the same thing what we just talked about. guys I just learned something that this terminal in fact is crimped I thought this uh looking on this side you can kind of see that it looks like it's an uncrimped terminal but it has been crimped there's a validation right there transformers oil is not contaminated I made sure to wash my hands and to also put on clean rubber gloves so this transformer is indeed okay now, our next step is to put this thing back together and hopefully never open it up again and continue doing our high voltage madness. All right, let's get that transformer terminal back on there and make the physical connection between us and our high voltage projects that we'll do in the future with this transformer. Boom, all right. Make sure I don't lose anything down inside the transformer. We wouldn't want that. That would be interesting. Our nut is a bit. And that's Our something you want to pay close attention to. When, whenever, um, whenever you're going inside of a transformer, there will be times, and we'll talk about this later on, when you're going to have to go inside and rework part of this transformer. You do not want to drop any nuts or tools or anything inside of this transformer. Um, seen that happen a couple of times when we're out there reworking transformers. Guy drops a nut, can't find it. We can seal that transformer back up and have to send it back to the transformer shop. You don't want to um, energize that that transformer with a, a nut. You don't know where it let, uh, went. It may be down across part of the windings, laying on something that's going to cause a, a dead short inside that transformer. You don't need to risk it. You just want to you know, stop what you're doing. It's going to be aggravating to have to go get another one, but you're going to have to get another one and start over with that. So um, anything dropped inside of it, just send it back in and let the um, transformer shop fix it. So knowing that the transformer is A-OK, -okay, here's a last little look inside of it. So yeah, that's quite a massive transformer, that is. But I'm pretty happy with uh, knowing that this transformer is OK. 
can see that the uh, core lamination is there. You can kind of see that, uh, yeah, it's quite a robust transformer, especially for a 5 kVA. You can kind of see that you've got your secondary terminals. These are your primaries. Um, and then your secondaries. Primaries, once again, is 14.4 kilovolts uh, coming in. And then coming out is your 120, 240 volt split phase, which feeds your house. And now to look at those terminals, we've got terminal A, which is one of your phases, 120 volts. Terminal B and C, which you can kind of see there. That's a center tap to join two 120 volt coils that are out of phase with each other. And then there's terminal D, which is your other 120 volt leg. So with both of those legs, you'll get 240 volts. And then with one of these legs to neutral, you would get 120 volts. And you'd use 240 volts to power your dryer, your stoves, your ovens. I use that power to power my experiments, which comes up from the basement. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This transformer isn't really that complicated, but it is quite nice. Um, oil's nice and clean. I'm pretty happy with how it is. So I think we ought to put this lid back together. And uh, all right, guys, you guys get. Yeah, I just wanted you to show where you could see it a whole lot better how the the primary coals or the primary. As you can see in that picture, instead of one bushing, primary bushing, you've got the two right there where it's coming in and going out. You see the see the two yellow and white. You see the you know primaries coming in here, going through the coals, and then coming back out on this side. So that's the two bushing transforming versus the one bushing. Um, just like what Professor Shoemaker said. It's a little bit more versatile, uh, depending on your situation of, of mounting it, which side you want to ground it versus which side you can you want to energize. Okay. Any questions about those? Any other comments? Okay. He, he oh. puts a he puts a lot of emphasis on uh, keeping the oil clean. Uh, obviously, if you need to get in a transformer, uh, Professor V will discuss this later. We're gonna have to do some lead switching. On the secondary side, you can't do this in the rain. Right. Moisture in a transformer will destroy one. Yeah. It'll be and dropping good. stuff. Oh, will you talk about a bad day? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's any, slick. Any internal fault inside this transformer is catastrophic. Just, I've seen it blow them apart, blow the lid off. And that's what it's designed to do is to blow that lid off, let that pressure out. But also, I've seen them catch fire. Um, the very first transformer, I'll tell you, that's the very first transformer I worked on um, when I went to work with the utility. Um, we had to rewire one of the banks and we did it. It was a tall older transformer. And these secondary, let me see if I can let you guys see it here. These, these secondary, you see it's kind of how it's got the little bend in it toward the tank, the tanks right here. The transformer we were working in, they were bent, but they were turned out toward the inside of the transformer or turned inward. When we rewired it, and I was watching the older guys do it, this is the first time I ever seen one done. They did it with the straps and it had like a 90 degree bend out and a 90 degree bend down. That lead was touching the tank on the inside we got it rewired, hung it on the pole. The guy closed the switch in and it was such an explosion. It was shorted out on the tank. And this was at the YMCA in Sumter. And it looked like somebody standing on top of that pole with a flamethrower shooting oil on top. And it was on fire shooting it on top of the YMCA, just a massive explosion. And that, you know, that is a dielectric for the transform, but it's very flammable. The old ones were much more flammable than these, what we have today. So those are things you have to look at to make sure that you do all you can to prevent an internal fault. Yeah. Why don't, why don't they fill it all the way to the top with oil? Why do you have a void in there? She got room to work. You know, to like- put You really don't have room to work at all. 
uh, it, it's for expansion. That yeah. oil will expand when it gets heated. And I tell you, put a transformer in overload, that oil is going to come up the tank from expansion. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think those are two good videos we looked at. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I got one more to show, but I'm not going to show it right this minute. We'll do this one a little bit, um, in just a little while. We start talking about uh, more inside of a transformer. So, but right now we are looking uh, about what, 939? Let's go ahead and take a break until about 950. Roger that. Good. I have a question for you. Make a way after the meeting. After the meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, no problem.
I'm going to share my screen. Record. I'm going to share my screen one more time. I'm going to be sharing my screen a right good bit because I'm going to be doing some drawing when we're talking about transformers and transformer banking and the reasons why we do it. And we just talked about um, how a transformer is made, the windings inside, um, the, what your primary bushings are. Can you guys see my share? Anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, guys, I'm just going to do a little drawing here. I'm not a Picasso, so it might get a little sloppy, but anyways, um, this is what you're going to see us draw out now. We're going to start drawing out some transformers. I'm going to start with a single phase transformer to give you an idea of how we're going to draw out um, one transformer at the time and how the voltages will go. And what I'm going to start with, this will be a, a single phase. This is going to be a single phase transformer, 120. 240 volts and you won't really draw out a single phase this is just to show you how to do on a single phase we're gonna uh, all our drawings are gonna be doing this on three phase banks and when I say banks that's going to refer to more than one transformer that's you know wired together configured for a certain type of voltage that the customer needs so if you see up here at the very top, you see it's P, that's gonna be your primary. And we're gonna, we're just gonna use the voltage right now. We're gonna use 7,200 volts. <clears throat> and how you would connect that in field is, of course you saw us, we, we do switches or cutouts on uh, cross arms to give transformers or a tap line voltage. So We'll go from a fuse, and I'm gonna change this. You got it. Okay. We're gonna connect the primary side, and I'm not gonna show the windings in the transformer, your primary side. It's gonna go in, and just like we talked about, it goes through the windings in the transformer, and then it connects down to your neutral. And it really, and guys, the neutral position on secondaries, it's really um, important to pay attention to that, where your neutral's at on the pole. Um, Duke, at Duke, our neutral is here with our secondaries right below it. But I'm sure, is, is this the way Santee Cooper does it, Professor Shoemaker? Neutral on top. Neutral on top, okay, well. All right, well, I'm just going to leave it right here since I've got this drawn in right now. Then we have our secondary bushings. And remember, this is your windings inside. Remember the where they were strapped in, A, B, C, and D. This is the external. If you've got A connected for 120 volts, then it'll come out your transformer phase there. The other hot leg will come down to the other leg and connect here. And this, this leg is going to give you 120. This leg is going to give you 120. And between the both of them, we're going to get 240. And don't forget, the most important part of this hookup is your neutral. Here. So from this leg to neutral, you get 120. From this leg to neutral, you get 120. Then across both hot legs, you get 240. Okay. Are there any questions about that single phase transformer and how you get voltages? Uh, the only thing that I would probably add to that is uh, Neutral bonding. Right. Now you got a pole ground that comes off the, you got ground, pole ground that comes off the pole or is on the pole. Yeah. That's bonded, that's bonded to the primary. And you got a secondary 
uh, neutral that's bonded to the pole ground. Then you've got the neutral itself, the neutral wire itself, that's bonded to the pole ground. Then you got the tank of the transformer that's bonded to the pole ground. So the grounding technique is everything as far as your neutrals, both the primary neutral and the secondary neutral and all grounds have a common bond. If you yeah. want to put it that way, there might be multiple connections, but everything that's supposed to go to ground is bonded to the neutral. Right. Very good. Now, have you got any questions about this single phase connection? Okay. Uh, yeah, I do. Just because of the video you showed earlier. Yes. Uh, what, as far as your red line that goes to the neutral, yes. how does that work on a single bushing transformer? How does it work from the red line? Yeah, so we're gonna take that bushing away and take that red line away. Yes. Now, what happens on a single bushing transformer? Where's that All right. bond on coming the, from? On the single bushing, it travels inside the tank, of course, through your windings. It's gonna go through all your little windings, and then it's gonna come down, and then it's gonna connect at this point right here on the tank. There you go. Any, any kind of tank connection, that's, that's where it's gonna end up, okay? And all transformers as well do, regardless if it's a, um, it, where if it goes back out of the, you know, the, the second bushing on the top of it's connecting, all transformers have tank grounds on them. That tank's always grounded. Um, I have seen certain situations where, like Professor Shoemaker said that, um, I had to go behind contractors where they hooked up transformers wrong and the tank of the, um, the tank would have primary voltage on it and it'd be smoking on the pole. It gets so hot on that pole connected to the wood. I mean, it would just have it smoking. So um, those ground connections are very important when you're hooking up primary to a transformer. Okay, no other questions on that. We're gonna move forward. Let me in you new won't save. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna bring another one up. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna go into now guys. We're gonna make a three. Oh, sorry. three phase, four wire bank. Okay, now if our, if our primary volt is just like on the other screen, it's 7,200 and that was phase two, phase to ground, what's our phase to phase voltage is gonna be here? We talked about this last week. What number did we use to multiply the 7,200 by? 1.7325. Way to calculate that. Anybody? 12,470. Excellent, thank you. 12,470. And that's... That's going to be your phase, 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 two phase. That's going to be 12,470. And then the 7,200, like we talked about, is going to be phase to ground, phase to ground, phase to ground, and that's 7,200. Okay. And guys, if you remember what we talked about last week as well, or it may have been earlier in the week, we talked about what kind of bank do we call this. This is going to be a closed, closed Y, closed delta bank. The primary connection on the top is going to be a Y connection 
-hmm. The connection on the secondary side of this transformer bank is going to be delta. Okay, it's going to be and it's going to be delta because they are going to be connected to each other electrically inside. So let's hook the primary side up first. Okay. So while while he's in the process of hooking up, the reason why we use the word closed on um, both of those terms right there is because we're using all three primary phases and all three secondary phases. So that is, that's why we call it closed. We'll get to open here later on. Right, okay, we've got all three primaries connected one to each transformer. And then now we're gonna connect the, the grounded side of the primary side of that um, top side of that transformer bank, we're going to connect them together. Hey, you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. All right, guys, that is the neutral side of your transformer on the top, the primary side. Um, we're not going to ground that. We're going to float that. Guys, there's a, there's a, there's a reason why this is done is because there is a circulating current between all three transformers and you don't want to ground that because I mean, it can really screw things up. These transformers are tied together. So they all work together and you want that, you want that circulating current to float through the top, you know, through the transformers itself. Now, there is a time when you will need to um, ground that top side. If you get a trouble call, you got lights out or you need to work on this bank and open it up before you can re-energize it, you've got to take this and go to ground with it, okay? You've got to ground that top side before you re-energize it or else there's gonna be, there. It, it, it can cause another situation and they call it ferro resonance. And what it does, it puts voltage or it can put a voltage back on the neutral. I've gone and I've seen guys close these banks in without grinding that high side neutral and lightning arresters will blow a block away or two blocks away, you know, or the lightning arresters, will, they'll blow on these transforming banks. It just puts that that ferro resonance, that that current back on the on the um, the line itself, and causes all kind of troubles. Professor Shoemaker, you have any other explanations for that? No, you, I mean you're one hundred percent correct there. Uh, I will bounce back to you know how you got your system drawn here. Remember, at the transmission came into the substation, and we talked about this when we talked about delta. Is is transmission delta or y? Remember, delta does not have a neutral. Transmission. All right, so it comes into the substation and the substation trans, uh, transformer for your, all your circuits that are going out, it's gonna convert that to Y. So that's why on the uh, first part there, your primary feed is closed Y. Well, if a customer actually needs delta at a lower voltage, he's gonna go right back and he's gonna convert it back to delta. And that's the process he's going through right now. Now, if it's delta, is there a neutral? Is the uh, primary got a neutral and is it grounded? Yes. Delta, delta. Oh, delta now. Right, see he's, co he's going back and he's converting back to delta. Uh, so that's why, thank you very much for doing that. That's why he's got all three transformers on the uh, green side tied together, but not tied to the neutral and ground. He's converting back to delta. So he's actually taking the different voltage type in three phase. So it came in transmission, delta, substation transformer converted to Y. Went out on your circuit, Y, now he's converting it back to delta. So you see the correlation of why you've got neutral, no neutral in that situation. We right. call that, and a term for that, and I, Professor V probably might have another, we call that connection for the green wire a floating neutral. Yep. Loading the neutral. It's not connected to the Thank you. And carry on, Professor V. Okay. 
Now, one other thing to explain here while you're at the, at the top side, you'll notice what he did with the red line from the face, the transformer, he's got them on the same bushing on every single transformer. Right. I can't go from A to the left and then B to the right bushing and then C to the left. They all have to correspond. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, moving down on the secondary side of this transformer bank. Um, you have this type of bank where it's a, a delta connected bank. These transformers are, have designated names to them. This, this middle transformer, we're going to call it a lighting transformer. These outside transformers, they're going to be your power transformers. What's, it, what's another name for the power transformer, Professor Shoemaker? High leg. High leg. High leg. And you cut out a little bit on the center transformer as far as audio was. That's lighting. Lighting. Not lightning, lighting. High leg. That's your power transformer or your high leg. Okay. And how to connect these up, of course, this is like the single phase transformer that we first looked at and drew on. Our first connection we're gonna make here, we're gonna make it down to the neutral. We're gonna tie that neutral in, okay? Now we wanna, we wanna bring our secondary legs down. And these are gonna be our 120 legs from here to here. And from here, I'm sorry, that's 240. I need to do that. There it goes. From here to here is 240. A to B, 240. A to B, 240. C to B, 240. And then you've got from neutral to here is 120 and then from neutral to here is 120. That's how you get your 120, 240, just, just like it is connected um, on that first transformer we drew or any trans that there's a transformer that hangs that serves our meter base on the field. It's just a single phase transform. That's how we get our voltage out of it. All right, now we want to get three phase because our, our customer needs three phase service um, in his plant. He's got some equipment inside it. It takes 240 volts, three phase to run his equipment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tie these transformers together. And while he gets in the process of drawing those leads in there right there, the reason why we call it the lighting transformer in the middle, and that's the position it will always stay. The lighting transformer mm -hmm. will be in the middle on a three phase closed Delta bank is because it's the same thing it does for your normal house. If I were to take the two other transformers away, it would be a, a transformer lighting for a house. That's what, that's hence why that's why we give it the name of lighting. Yeah, okay. Now, this is what we, we're gonna call this our tie-in bus. And guys, remember all this terminology as we tell you because um, the next couple of weeks, we're going to have you, we're going to print out some drawings for you to draw this out. And we want all this terminology as far as the floating neutral, power transformer, high leg lighting transformer, tie-in bus, your voltages, um, primary and secondary. You're going to have to notate all this on whether it's a drawing or whether it's um, the voltage simulator or wiring it out on the yard. So. Just remember our terminology here. So now we want to get a high leg voltage for our customer to get that three phase. They're tied, I'm sorry guys, tied here. And tied here. You they notice are, he, carry, he carries both of those leads down to the same secondary line. C Correct. and C. Yes. Okay. So what's our guys? Tell me what our voltage is from here 
to here. Anybody? We're looking for 12240 three phase service. We've already got 240 here and we've got 240 here. We've gone from C phase. We're going to measure our voltage from C phase to neutral. Can anybody give me a guess what that's going to be? Uh, 120. Negative. Hold on. Keep keep asking around. Here. Going. 480. Uh, exactly. No volts. No, you've got volts. You definitely got volts. 240. Nope. No. All right, I'll give you guys a hint here. All right, you, how many transformers are involved? Three. Two. Oh, two. 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 Oh, my bad. Right hand transformer, left hand transformer are two different transformers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I've got what's the voltage coming out of one of those transformers? One. I've only got I've got a tie-in bus and I've got one lead coming out. What kind of voltage do I have? Just one of them phase to ground. All right, I'll, I'll go in this direction. If I was to go to the center transformer and only have the neutral and one lead. What would the voltage be coming out? 120. There you go. So on the left-hand transformer, I've got my tie-in bus, which is tied in with neutral eventually. And I've got one lead. So what voltage is coming out of that one left-hand transformer? 240. All right. I've got the center transformer. I'm going to come out with my neutral and one lead. What's my voltage? 120. All right. I got my left hand transformer. It's tied in with one lead. That's my voltage? 120. There you go. There you go. Okay. Now look at your right hand transformer. What's the voltage coming out of that one by itself? 240. Look at the right hand transformer. I've got oh, no, that would be 120. Lead coming out. What's my voltage? 120. There you go. You got 120 on the left, 120 on the right. All right, so keep that in your data banks right there. I am using two different primary phases. So what do we do with the voltage primary wise when we combine two different primary phases? What magic number do we use? 1.7325. Excellent, hold that in your data banks right there. Now, because I'm feeding two transformers with two different primary phases, what's 120 and 120 combined when I'm using two different 240. primary phases? 240. Look at the equation you have down at the bottom. I'm using two different primary phases now. Oh, I got you. 207.9. Right, uh, 208. There you go. There's your answer. Whenever I start combining <laughs> from different primary phases in two more transformers, the high leg or power transformer is the single phase voltage times 1.7325. Let's say that again. Can you repeat that again. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever I have two or two or more transformers hooked up to two different primary phases. The output of the transformers combined is whatever the voltage is. Say this is a 120, 220, trans 240 transformer. I'm only getting 120 out of it times 1.7325. Okay. Everybody got that? Okay. Hearing nothing else. Now, remember, we have 240 volts here, between here, and now we need a third leg of 240. So where do we go to get our, we've got um, between A and B and B and B and C, where do we get our other, our third phase of 240 from? The 
between A and C. A and C. We're going to get 240 there as well. So now we've got our custom with three phase of 240 for the high leg. And then we've got their lighting transformer giving them 120, 240 single phase as well. Okay. Guys, you got any questions about that? I mean, that's a lot to take in. It is. I mean, the degree, the degree of difficulty here uh, accelerates. And there are, I want to say general rules, there are hard rules that are set into place as far as you start combining primary phases. Remember, and I've said this from the beginning, whatever happens at the top happens where? At the, at the bottom. At the bottom. At the bottom. So if your phase to phase voltage at the top is 1.7325, then your phase to phase voltage at the bottom, when you combine two different transformers, is going to be that voltage times 1.7325. Just remember that in, in the future right here. Uh, I like that question. I like the color coding. Okay. Okay. Who's got the question? Uh, Tim. Timmy? So if we use the B phase on the top side, why aren't we not using the B phase on the bottom side? Uh, I can't see that. If I B oh, phase man. the ground, he's got an arrow to it. It should be connected here. I went a little bit too far. That good idea. Okay. 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 Cool. Okay. That shouldn't be right there. Uh, another, and I like the way he did this one. Uh, the drawings are going to be a little bit different. You'll notice he went A on the second side. A, then B. which which phase did he make the high leg? A, B, or C? A. A, B, or C? High leg. The high leg. Oh, it would be C. It would be C, correct, right? You want to try to maintain that position all the time. Left to right, A, B, C. And everybody out there in the world that you work with is going to know the C phase is going to be your high power leg phase. Good observation on that, TT. Right. Guys, you got any other questions about this bank? And we, I mean, this is just day one of it. We're going to probably spend the next week and a half, maybe. Um, on building this stuff where you can get your hands on it, like I said earlier, and um, get very familiar with it, okay? And what kind of bank is this, guys? A closed delta. It's a closed Y, closed delta bank, okay? All right, guys, are we good to move on to the next type of bank? Mr. Shoemaker? Uh, are you going to erase this one? Are you going to save it? No, I want. I would just want to say, comment. Which one are you going to, buddy? Uh, open. Okay, great. If you guys, I don't know how you're using your screens or whatnot. Take a look at this one real quick. I'm going to take a piece of paper and put it over my screen. And I'm going to block out everything on the left-hand side. Look at that real quick if you get a chance. And then he's going to move on to open delta. So I just took a piece of paper, laid it down on my screen, and I blocked out the wiring and the transformer for uh, all of the left-hand side. All right, carry on, Professor V. Let me know because I'm fixing to get rid of it. Go for it. OK, here we go. And this is all being recorded, so you can go back to it. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. All right, now, I'm going to pull this one. All right, guys, same thing. Just we're minus one transformer. Just remember what you just looked at before. Oh, sorry. What you looked at before with it, we had a third transformer sitting right here, remember? I know that's ugly, but that's the way it looked. Now, same situations, same voltage. We're going to use 7,200. Phase to, uh, phase to ground, 
12,470 phase to phase. And guys, this kind of bank here is called a open Y, open delta. And that's because we're only using two transformers. It's not a closed bank. A closed bank means we'd be using three. Mm -hmm. This is open. And there's certain situations and Professor Schumacher likes to give the example of the little place right there at uh, Red Hill. What's it called, Shoemaker? Uh, golly, that you can call me Oliver's. Oliver's, Oliver's down there. He has he has a need for three phase service. The only need he has for it is for his air conditioning system in his in his building. He cooks. I think he cooks with gas, and he needs light, so he needs to have his um, lighting transformer. And he needs his high leg or his power transformer for that heating and air AC unit up there. That's the only thing he has three phase. So it is a, a much smaller bank. He does not need that third transformer, that extra power from that um, third one going in. So we'll draw this in as well, guys. And we'll start with A phase. We'll run this up to A phase. And we'll put our other primary on B phase. Now, because we do not have that third transformer, we will not float this neutral. We're gonna run it up to ground or neutral. We're gonna ground it to start with and leave it grounded. Okay. That's the way we'll connect the top sides of our transform, our open Y, open delta bank, okay? We'll move down on our secondary side. I'm gonna connect my neutral first. So he gets done connecting this transformer. I want you to tell me if this is the lighting transformer or you, you already got it written there? Yeah, you mean to get lighting ready? Lighting and power transformer. So a, a rule, hard rule here is the lighting transformer always is on the left-hand side. Right. We're going to connect that one to A phase. We'll connect that to B phase. Guys, what, what did we call this here? Where we made our tie? With the bus tie? Yep. Tie and bus, correct. Tie and bus, correct. All right. Now we're going for our high leg for our power transformer. So, which leg do we connect this to? See, right. Yeah. Okay. Now we've eliminated this one altogether. We don't have this one anymore. We just have this open bank. That's the way you're going to connect up your open bank. You're going to get your same voltages uh, from this leg to A. It's going to be. 120 volts, sorry. You're gonna get from A from here to neutral is gonna be 120. From B to neutral is gonna be 120. Don't give them the answer. Oh, sorry. All right, now. On the next one. Yep, C. What's our, what's our voltage gonna be on C from here to here? From C phase, go ahead. 240. God. 240. What did we say before? What was no, it on the uh, closed oh, up thing? Yeah, what's it on the top is on, yeah, I got 120. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're combining two different primary phases. You're getting output from the left transformer and the right transformer. Should be 208. Hey, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> Remember, we went 120 times 1.7325 to get that 208. Okay. Now, so for any of you, the guys that did my paper trick, all this is is a closed delta bank without one transformer. Right. Yeah, I just took the you know left hand transformer and threw it away. Okay. Right. I see. 
you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yep, we took that away now. Phase to phase, this is all, that was all phase to ground. Now we're looking at phase to phase on this side. So from A to B, what are we gonna get guys? 120. Two forty. Two forty. Here. What are we getting? B to C phase. Two forty. And how about from A phase to C phase? What are we getting? Should be four sixteen. What now? No, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Saw me shaking my head. <laughs> I was thinking of something else, but all right, he wants two forty three phase. We've already got two phases of it at two forty. What's the third phase going to be? Phase to phase. Two forty. Who said that? TT. TT two forty. Correct. I'm going to take a, as soon as you get done explaining. Then I'm going to take a share over here. All right, go ahead. Can we stop share? No, you can stay. I got. I got to draw it out. Okay. Might help explain the how we're getting 240 off of uh, that one. One pilot phase. Mm -hmm. Let's see where I want to go here. All right, if you could unshare, uh, this will happen. It'll just take control of yours. Okay. Okay, guys. So both on the on the primary phases. And the secondary phases here. The reason why you're getting 240 off of 28 and 120 uh, lead combination right there all comes back to the sine waves we talked about in three phase. So remember, during the course of this, I've got some voltage here, some voltage here, and some voltage on here. Through the course of it, now that I've got 208, I can't measure that to 120 because no, not all three phases are peaking at the same time. So if I measure C phase to B phase, C phase to ground is my high leg, that's 208. Well, the other two are only producing what? 32 volts at that time. Does that make sense to you more? Hmm. Is it a yay or a nay? Anybody? Peaking with C phase oh. right here at 208. A and B are all the way down at 32. So what does that combine? 240. 240. 240, there you go. One's peaking, the other two are really not doing that much at the same time. So that's why you're getting that reading. Just remember in time at one specific point, this is almost a peak right here. We'll see that at a C phase, 208. Where are the other two? Way down. Down here. So that's why you're getting that combination. Remember, in three phase, not all three phases are producing voltage, their peak voltage at the same time. I'll unshare Professor B. Okay. Get back to you. Okay. Okay, these two banks of the open Y, open delta, and closed Y, closed delta, those are things that you're going to see like in a, like we said, a, the, the small, the open bank's going to be in situations where there's not a whole lot of three phase load needed. The closed bank is going to be more of your industrial uh, and large commercial customers. Um, very rarely will you see a residence have three phase. Um, back in the day, a long time ago, in the 60s, I know one time it was um, 
they went to some house, larger houses and went to three phase on the heating and air units. Um, but anything else in their house was single phase 12240. So you won't see very much residential three phase like that unless it's a, a really large house that needs that really large um, heating and air unit combined like that and have three phase. Um, uh, before we take a break, it's 1030. Professor Shoemaker, you got anything you want to add to that? No, sir. Fine job. Okay. Well, um, it's 1030. We'll go ahead and take a break. Uh, come back at 1040. And then we'll look at the, um, the last bank for today.
uh, Professor Shoemaker. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have a question real quick. Sure. On a close one, close Delta uh, bank, is the leftmost transformer is the power leg. On close Delta, you have two power leg transformers. All right. Okay. Because I was reading over this. Right. So and, that's, and that's left and right. Yeah, the left and right are the power legs, and the right one is called the high leg. The left. The right, and, local. right. Yeah, I hear where you're going. The left and right hand transformers are your power leg. All right. Both left and right. Center is lighting. On open delta, you only have two transformers. So your left hand is lighting and your right hand is power leg. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. I was just thinking, um, we got them all wired in the phase, but isn't it going to cause a problem whenever they're um, running to the customer and the customer's using too much on one phase? Let's wait till everybody gets back because that's an excellent question. I was just thinking about that because when I was on a generator, I had to make sure my faces were balanced. If not, okay. it was called. Hey, hey, we'll get to that in just a moment, but that is a great question. Okay. So let me go back to this. Yeah, we'll use this one as a show. Yeah, let me know when your timing's right there, Professor V. Okay, we just got another minute here. Okay. Give everybody a chance to get back. Sure. <laughs> All right, it looks like it's 1040. And we are recording again. Okay. So, Mr. Uh, who is that, Timothy? He must have stepped away. Okay. We'll wait on him. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to wait on him long. 18. All right. I'll, I'll let you have it back and he could just restate that question when he comes back. Okay. All right, guys, we, we've looked at open Y, open Delta, closed Y, closed Delta. Now we're, we're going to look at a YY bank. Um, and that's, and that'll be when you hear somebody say YY, that means it's closed. It's a closed bank. You can't have an open YY bank um, that I've seen. Why? 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 Because <laughs> the customer needs it. <laughs> so we're going to look at, we're going to use the same primary voltage, 7,200. Are you going to share? Oh, I'm not sharing. I'm oh, sorry. No problem. My bad. If I can get back to it. Oh, where'd it go? 
go. Here we go. All right, screen share. Bam. Thank you, Professor Shoemaker. No problem. All right, guys, primary voltage is 7200-12470. Now we're going to look at giving the serving our customer with a 120. I'll write it up here, 120, 208 voltage. And guys, most of the time when you see this voltage, man, when I started learning about transformer banking, I would ride around and I'd look for this kind of bank, but look at your McDonald's and your um, Hardee's and cookouts and those kinds of restaurants, some gas stations, it's a very popular uh, voltage for those types of businesses um, that don't have that, that don't have the need for a high legs, they just want that three phase 12208 voltage. Um, so, and what we'll do here is we'll go through the same steps. Um, our our primary voltage, like I said, 7200 12470 phase to phase. We'll go ahead and connect. If we're building this bank, somebody. Tell me which phase I should go on this transformer. Where would I go with this transformer? Which phase? A. A, middle transformer. B. 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 Uh, last transformer? C. C phase, that's correct. Now, same, this is kind of the same, but it's different. You know, remember on the, the Delta transformer, we floated that neutral on a Y bank. We do not float it. We connect them all together. And then we go to neutral ground with that neutral. Okay. It does not float. Okay. Now, secondary side. Well, before we get into that, Remember the, the video we saw where they had the, um, it showed the A, B, C, and D on the inside the transformers? Well, this is the only kind of transformer that I know of where you're going to have to go inside and parallel the windings in the transformer. Now, why do you do that? Because you only want to get phase to ground voltage of 120 volts out of each transformer. So you saw the markings in the transformer. A was on one side, B, C in the middle, D was on the other side. So you want to parallel them. So A, <clears throat> A, C will be tied and B, C, I'm sorry, B, D will be tied. A, C, alley cat, B, D, bad dog. Professor Schumacher, y'all had another name for it? Well, I always like to relate it back when uh, we had to rewire the internal of a transformer to make it all 120 is what type of yeah. electricity do we use? Right. AC. AC. And what's left over? BD. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what that is, guys, is what you're doing is you're taking those, those windings and going from here to here and here. That here, you're doubling the capacity of those windings, you've got AC and BD. You're just what they call paralleling the windings on that transformer. And you're doing just like the guy took the, um, the top of the tank that lid off. When he was looking, that's what you're going to have to do. You're physically going to have to go inside the transformer. Take them loose and then rebuild it back together inside. Just whenever you do that, just like what I said before, make sure they are touching nothing but the bushes that they're landing on. Don't let the the um, the straps hit on the side of the tank or get crossed up down there anyway. You just want to make sure that there's no catastrophic event that happens when you close those switches in. So. When we're going and doing that inside these transformers, how many bushings are we going to need on the outside since we parallel those windings on the inside? We're just stacking them on top of each other. Three. Are we going to need, huh? Three. Nope. 
Just remember, we're just we're going to just be using two two of these bushings. Some and and it varies from company to company how they use it. Some companies use this bushing and this bushing, or they might use that bushing and that bushing. It really depends. Santee Cooper uses which ones? The outsides? Yeah, we use the uh, both left and right to get a good separation. Right. So it'd be Do two of them. Yeah, it doesn't matter which two. I mean, I like using the two outside bushes because it does give you more separation. Duke Energy is a little different. They use the middle and the left. But for our purposes today, we're going to use the two outside. One side, this is going to be like maybe AC and BD. We're going to make AC. We're going to ground that. Okay. So if you, could hold, if you could just hold right there for a moment. I can. All right. All three banks that we're doing right here, which is the only one that has the floating neutral? Only one. On the secondary side. No, on primary. Oh, primary. Yeah. What was the first one we did? He did not ground the neutral bushing. It was the first one. Single phase transformer. What was the first bank that he drew? Oh, the three phase four wire bank. What was the first bank that he drew? What was the name of it? Closed delta. No, closed delta. Closed delta. Closed delta. So, you know, keep that in your mind. So that's the only one you have to worry about as far as floating the neutral. The other two banks are connected. Closed delta is the only one with a floating neutral. Okay. Carry okay. on. All right, now we've designated that we've got this transformer, the windings parallel inside. We're gonna use the two outside bushes because we don't need the third. We're gonna use the right-hand bushing on this transformer as our neutral. All right, now we wanna tie, tie our neutrals together on the transformers themselves. So we'll go, we're gonna parallel all three transformers to get the same voltage out. We just want 120. 120 volts out of each transformer. So we're gonna tie our neutrals together. Notice he uses the same bushing on every transformer. Correct. All right, all right hand side. That's our neutral, okay? Now we'll start with the middle transformer. I should have did that in green since it was the neutral, but anyway. No, that's good. We're gonna come from here to which phase? Hey. A phase. Okay, we've got that one tied in. Move over to the right. Which phase is this one going to? Anybody? C. B. B or C. It really doesn't matter. It can go to B or C. But what we're doing with this, we'll bring C. this one down to C. All right, guys, I'm going to pick your brains a little bit here. Our first transformer, and these are all the same voltage, they're all 120 volt transformers. So from A to neutral is gonna give me what? 120. 120. Good answer. From B to neutral. 120. And from C to neutral. 120. All right, now put your thinking caps on. If I'm going from A to B from this transformer lead to this trans, was it that one or that one, A and B? From here to here, what's my voltage from A to B? Should be 208. Excellent. What, and who answered that? TT. All right, TT, why is it not 240? Because they're in parallel, so you're going to combine all three together to get one voltage. Right, and you're using how many different primary phases? Uh, you're using one primary and one neutral. No, no, no. Look up. Oh, I'm sorry, two you're primaries. Yep, I've got a primary phase that feeds a transformer from 
B on this one that he discussed, and I've got a primary phase that I'm feeding from C. So I'm using two different primary phases. Whatever happens on top, happens on the bottom. Okay, good job. All right, now what's my last voltage? A to C? 208. 208. And there's your B to C. Yeah, there you go. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a couple questions out here that uh, and think don't don't jump on this. Which transformer is the lighting transformer? On the left. The middle. In the middle. All right. Anybody else? Middle. Okay. There is no lighting transformer. All right. Do I have a transformer that could power my house in this in this makeup right here? 12240. Yes. Which yeah. One? Which one? All three. I can only get 120 out of the each one of the transformers. So how am I getting 240? No, you're not. You're not. So is there a lighting transformer in this bank? No. 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 Good answer. Good answer. Okay. Which one's my high leg transformer? My power transformer. <laughs> On the uh, left. Anybody else? Um, they should all be since they're in parallel. There's really no high leg transformer. <laughs> but because all three are producing a phase to ground voltage that is the same, 120, 120, 120. And all three are also producing a voltage of 208, 208, 208. There is no high leg phase to ground. So it has neither of them, but all three combined have their own purpose. That's the, that's the weird thing about why. There's yeah. no high leg, no lighting. Yeah. Hmm. And, and kind of just, I guess this might freak you out a little bit. There are different voltages in Y and Delta as well, but in Y, you're gonna look at, instead of a 12208, you're gonna look at a 277, 480. Mm -hmm. 480 bank. It's the same thing. You get 277 volts out of each transformer. And then phase to phase, how do you get, how do you get 480 out of 277, guys. And he's still on Y here. So he's saying his Y, he's saying he's got 277 phase to ground, A, B, and C. How is he getting 480 phase to phase? It's magic. Number. <laughs> Seven. 277 times 1.7325 gives you what? 480. <laughs> 480. How about that? Isn't that something? No. Okay. Same thing. It's just got a, instead of um, 240 windings that are parallel, it's got, you know, 480 windings that's parallel in it. So, just different size wine that's in the transformers and you'll, you'll have that on different banks. You know, you just have to make sure that you pick the right transformer off the yard for the application that you need. Absolutely. You do not want to put 480 on a 12208 service. It'll uh -oh. be a day for the customer. Uh oh. Yeah. So any questions about any of this fellas? I know that's a, your brains are probably mush right now, but um, this is being recorded. You can get back to it and look at the drawing and um, kind of feel through it. And the next week, we'll, um, we're gonna give you the drawings themselves. We got some blank drawings we'll give you to practice on. And then, like I said, the field and then with the, um, the trainer itself, we'll throw all that in because we wanna make sure you get this. This is one of the, the main things that things that um a serviceman or a guy on the line crew needs to know this is kind of like climbing 
Mm-hmm. You know, you need to know how to build a transformer bank. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna troubleshooting. Yeah. You're definitely gonna need to though this construction. Yeah. Golly, yeah. There's so many factors that are coming onto this. And there's no, to me, there's nothing more impressive than to see somebody either new or with a little bit of experience that can come to a poll. One, diagnose problems in three phase. Two is build in three phase. And I'll, I'll be totally honest with you guys. Uh, uh, we had some linemen years ago, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, there were line technician A's that were kind of sketchy on this. And for you to be able to come into a company and at least have the understanding of how, how this works, boy, it's going to carry it a long way as far as your career is concerned, one. And two, and when you get to that promotion period, you're going to see this. That's, there's no doubt about it. Right. And just remember, that's the symbol for why. Just to throw that in. And it's grounded. Very cool. You want to make sure you've got that ground added into that symbol. Okay. You guys got any questions, comments? Um, just the one about what I asked earlier about the phases being out of balance. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. And, uh, you know, I think, are you close to finishing here, Professor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a summary here and, you know, give, give something these guys can use out in the world whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. Let me stop share. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share over here. And guys, I mean, you actually have the tools right now to, to diagnose and give information to your fellow coworkers that a lot of people don't know. I should be sharing screen one. It is. All right. I'll just throw this question out here. And I love to keep things short and simple. Kiss. Okay. Uh, it just makes, it's going to make your career and job and everything that you work on just a lot more quicker, easier, and more efficient. What kind of bank is this? Two transforms. It's only got two transformers in it. Open uh, wide yeah. and delta. Oh, Open. Yeah, I, you know, I really, and I, I'm glad that Professor V includes the open Y, open delta. For this picture's concern, I don't know what kind of primary system they have. Right. As long as you're able to identify the bank. Now, in teaching three-phase banks, it's good to know that. But if I was to drive by a pole that had two transformers in it, and they've got the tie-in bus together, open Delta every single time. Yeah. So if you drive by poles and you see two transformers configured like this, you can tell the boss man, yeah, it's an open Delta bank. All right. He might ask you, well, wh which one's the, the lighting transformer? What's the KVA on the lighting transformer? Yeah. Two five. 25 KVA. Okay. Uh, wh which side is the high leg transformer on? The right, the right hand side. See, you see, you guys are getting tools already and understanding what kind of banks are going on. All right, I'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult. Oh man, shoot, <laughs> I gave the answer away. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you didn't see that. What kind of bank is this? So use a little bit of reverse engineering right here. Do I have a lighting transformer? First, where should the lighting transformer be? Metal. Metal. All right. Is this a lighting transformer? No. No, it won't power a house. I've only got two wires coming out of it. What kind of bank is it? A wah wah. Why? There you go. Fantastic. All right, I did it by just by deduction. I've got three transformers. They only have two wires a piece. That's a Y bank. I mean, I've got three total, but I only have two leads a piece. That's a Y bank. Every single transformer configuration that you see like this is Y. All right. What's with the uh, side skirts on the side of that? Side skirts. Uh, on, oh, like the little plates. Those are pretty large transformers. I would put them right around 100 kVA. Those are oil radiators. 
right? That cools the transformer down and it works by percolation. So there's a pipe at the bottom, a pipe at the top, all right? Heat rises. So it's going to rise through here. Air just passes by it and keeps the transformers cool. Gotcha. And it looks like they've been a little bit hot before. You see this? Yeah. Yeah, they've been hot. Yeah. Okay. Let me get, I got it. How many transformers do I have in this bank? Three. 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 So I've narrowed it down to either a, a Y or a, a closed Y or a closed delta. Will this transformer power my house? One. Yeah. Two. Three wires. Guess what kind of bank it is? Open. Closed delta. Close delta. Close delta. Remember, in open delta, only have two transformers. Open delta, two transformers only. All right. And then from the back and forth of Y and closed delta, all I need to do is look at the center transformer. Two leads, Y. Three leads, delta. So you guys have become mini investigators here. Okay. What's, I mean, in total, in scope of everything, I need to, uh, well, I can do it from over here. I'll drag it over here. And we've had plenty of students ask this question. Well, why? I mean, why do we do this? Uh, Professor B got into this. I just wrote it out as he went along. Mm -hmm. Why do we use closed it's delta? Well, we have a high single phase load and a high three phase load at whatever we're trying to feed. A uh, good one is uh, camp four. What do you think is out there at camp four? You know what that is? It's the lumber place over there in Red Hill. Do you think they have a motor or two out there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're sawing like crazy out there, okay? So they have a high single phase load and a high three phase load, and that's a big organization. So that's where I'm gonna use closed Delta. Open Delta, just like Oliver Store. He's got a high single phase load. He cooks with gas, but he still has lighting and you know all that kind of stuff going on in his store. But he only has one three phase air conditioner. So he's got a high single phase load and a low three phase load. I don't need that third transformer for the three phase load. So I'm just going to use two, open delta. All right, why? We're going to go a little bit on a description of this. Y equals a balanced single phase and three phase load. Now, Professor V gave, gave a couple uh, uh, examples of institutions that use it. What were they? You guys remember? Fast huh? Fast food restaurants like cookout. Fast McDonald's. food restaurants, uh, you know, even sit down restaurants like uh, mm -hmm. Carabas or uh, where's my daughter love to go? Oliver's and stuff like that. They'll go the cheap two or eight route. Most of the equipment that they use in that institution and the equipment is made for it. If I'm running 12208, am I gonna put a, a 240 volt refrigerator in there? Will it work? No, 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 no. We're way out of the scope of the plus or minus 5%, right? So they're gonna buy and install three phase. 208 equipment that's what they're going to have in their institution okay so that that's accommodated for them but why wouldn't i just go ahead and use closed delta this 240 for one both of them are balanced and two is and we're getting down to this right here the company benefits and the customer benefits benefits i know we've probably said this a hundred times so far what happens with my volts if I raise my volts, amps go down. The amps go down. It lowers amps my amps. Down. So now to feed those customers, I can use a 75% smaller transformer and it becomes 150% efficient. I can also use smaller <laughs> conductors. So that helps me in cost. Mm -hmm. All right. Think of the customer. What happens if I raise my volts? Amps lower down. Amps go down. To lower their amps and the meter is not going to turn as quick so they got a meter savings on their side also all right i'm going to bring i'm going to share screen over here just because professor b brought it up and i don't mean that in a bad way so let me up, stop my share here oh my goodness that looks great all right stop that share and let's go over here to this share 
uh, here, right back to the same page. So Professor V threw a, I won't say abnormal, it's normal to us, a uh, different voltage out there. If you remember what it was, normally our home runs off of what? 120. 12240. We talked a little bit about restaurants and, and whatnot. That's 12208. But he also gave one that was what? 277 and 480, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, sir. All right. I will let you know the transformer that feeds building 300 or any of the buildings out there at the college. All of those transformer, the secondary output is 277480. That's going into the each one of the buildings out there at Lori Georgetown Tech. So does that mean if you walk in there with your cell phone and your charger that you're plugging into a socket that's got 480 volts on it? No. So what's the college doing? Regulating the uh, voltage. I couldn't make that out. Regulating the voltage? Uh, you're getting very close. I, I can't regulate that extreme. What do I have to do to it? Step it down. Are you breaking up again? Step down the voltage? There you go. You're right. Each floor of building 300 has a 480 to 120. Golly, 240 transformer on it. All right. And all the buildings otherwise have 122 40 transformers in them. Okay, now there is some 480 equipment in the air conditioning for three phase, but that's what they're doing internally into the college. All right, I will let you know that a, a transformer of that type for that amount of load they got, you could be running anywhere between five and seven thousand dollars to have that thing in your building. But what's it doing to their electric bill every month? Saving them money. By how much? It's being sent in the building at 480. I'm consuming at 240. By half. By half. They're cutting their electric bill in half every single month because they're using their own transformers in the building. Guys, these trans, I did the calculations in the last class for math. These were paid for in one month. And from that, that point on into the future, their electric bill is cut in half. So that really goes into depth of why you're using three phase one for one purpose and then the different voltages that you're using in different institutions. You can see how it benefits. And really, is that helping me also as an electric company? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can use smaller conductors now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, yeah, that's a lot to consume. Yeah. In one day, and believe you me, we will definitely be going over it more into right. the future. Mr. Timothy Thomas. Did he leave again? Yes, sir. He's oh. here. Okay. All right. Uh, please restate your question. I was wondering, since we have uh, the three phases, what if the customers or the construction of customers get their phases out of balance by overloading one phase? It has happened before, but they do have a standard to go by. And it's a NEC, National Electric, NESC, a National Electric Safety Code, code and an ANSI code that they have to follow, American National Safety Institute. All right, they, in their process as an electrician, and we'll just put these out here, You're talking three phase and single phase, right? Yes, sir. All right. So we'll say these are the wires that are going into the house. Uh-oh, I did that wrong. Hold on. What's their color coding? Red, white, blue. Red, white, Red, white and blue. Their color coding. Oh, uh, boy. Brown, Brown yellow. yellow. Why did that change sizes? B, O, Y, and then a neutral. What's our color coding? Red, white, and blue. There you go. Letter that. Letter that. R, W, B. Oh. 
Okay. Red, ABC. white, blue. There you go. A, B, C phases. It is the electrician's responsibility on this side to distribute B, O, and Y in a fashion around whatever they're inside of in a manner to where load is distributed evenly. Now, have you gone to the breaker box in your house and a breaker has tripped and it's been the kitchen? Or have you got a breaker in your house and uh, that breaker trips off and it's one, it's a bedroom. You see the situation that I'm talking about there? Mm -hmm. In the case of that, you are gonna have some cases of some imbalance of load, but it won't be so much to where it's not gonna be an imbalance on the conductors coming out to be anything to be considered, okay? It's the electrician's responsibility is what I'm getting at to wire a house to distribute load evenly. Once that is complete, it should match up with the load you have to provide. Obviously, I don't wanna have 100 amps, 100 amps, and then five on this phase, that's gonna be a problem. Where does the uh, unbalanced load travel? I got 205, where does the imbalance of load travel? Down the neutral, and that's actually a loss of power for us. We don't want that situation to happen. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Same, you know, and it really, the way you ask it, it really bounces back to uh, Oliver's and Camphor. I'm not gonna put a closed Delta bank up there. It's just way out of efficiency and, it, and it's a huge cost for something I don't need to provide a little bit of load for on the third high leg or on the three phase. But great question. Any other questions that are going on out there? Professor V, I think you did an excellent job today. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, guys, about what we talked about this morning? Okay. Um, no quiz today. You agree with that, Professor Shoebaker? I do. I think that's, you know, we're, we're chewing, biting off a lot here. Yeah, I think you know we get need to get some more lecture on it before we produce any quizzes. All right, next week we'll hit it pretty hard. So, guys, I, that's all I've got for today. Okay, that's all I have. Unless you guys have further questions, I know Kualik, you wanted to hang around, right? Kualik. Yes, sir. Wow, that is. Wow, that is. Hold on. All right. Uh, just real, just real, real quick. You're saying real, real quick. Uh, Trayvon. Hold on one second, buddy. Where's your video, dude? I, I was on my phone because my laptop started freezing. So I went on my phone and I was putting everything in my notes. Okay.